Hi guys, Orton McGuckin here from Apex Music, back with episode 3 of our recording masterclass. We're going to get a little bit further into the DAW. Uh, we're not going to go too advanced yet, we're still just uh, going to be talking basics. This is a basic uh, masterclass, so we're going to keep things simple for you. We're going to show you how to get it uh, set up even further. We're going to show you how to get signal into your DAW from your interface. This will apply to basically any interface. We're also going to show you how to set up uh, monitoring that sound back, setting up monitor sends for maybe a performer that's going to be performing in your studio and also setting up a metronome for them to hear it back in their ears. As mentioned, this will apply to most DAWs, some are a little bit different, but if you have any questions, please send us a message, give us a shout, we're really happy to help you out. Let's get stuck in guys. So furthering on from week two, we're going to get a little bit more in depth into our DAW. Uh, we already showed you last week how to uh, set up uh, your DAW for your interface and set up your inputs and outputs. Uh, so very simply, we're going to show you here today how to get the signal into your DAW, how to set up monitoring and metronomes as well for performers and separate monitor mixes as well for performers. So we're using Cubase, as you know from last week. Uh, this is relevant for most DAWs. Uh, things are just maybe a little bit different when it comes to setting up uh, your cues and your monitor mixes and stuff, but uh, relatively simple to work out. If you have any problems, please shoot us a message. We'll be happy to help. Okay, so as you can see, I've got uh, my audio coming in to this channel. Uh, basically, to do that, I added, I'm going into number 16 on the Q16 and I just selected that as my input for this channel. If I just go over to this window and go to routing, you'll be able to see that the routing up above, it kind of works the kind of the same as like a desk and like signal flow. Uh, so you start off with your routing at the top and it goes all down through your inserts, uh, then your EQ, and then your sends after that. Uh, so it kind of does work on QBS the same as it would on uh, an analog desk. Uh, you even have your analog strip here. Uh, so uh, after you've got uh, your audio in, uh, and plus this works uh, for multiple channels, so maybe if you have a drum kit set up uh, from channel one to six, say on your audio interface or whatever you're using, uh, you can then just set it up uh you make six channels then or six uh, new channels on your DAW. so to do that on cubase you just right click here add audio track or you go up to a uh, project add track audio uh you'll add that in uh, and then select what that corresponding channel is so maybe if you have a kit uh one to six then you basically add six new channels and all the inputs going from input one to six basically it is very straightforward as long as your desk and everything uh, or your interface is set up with your DAW. So now that you've got uh, that audio in, what you want to do is be able to hear that back. So as we talked about in the last one, the last video was setting up your outputs. So on Cubase, a uh, very simple way to do it is just go to your outputs, add a bus and a stereo bus and uh, you just go here, stereo, you'd hit add, I already have one in. Uh, make sure that the audio device is set up for your interface then uh, you add it'll normally be channel one and two on most interfaces if you are by any chance using the q16 it is 17 18 which is being used now uh, that is a simple way to do it there's this other thing over here called studio most of the time the studio control room will be actually turned off uh, so you don't really have to worry about that uh, but if you were to set it up in the studio control room you want to add a monitor because uh, the monitor is what you hear back so once you've got that you make sure that you've set up for your stereo out uh, that'll be what you set up for channel one and two earlier and once you have that set up you should be getting signal back all you have to do on your interface is turn it up uh, I am now getting signal back through my studio monitors. 
Uh, some interfaces will have a, a monitor out uh, on it. So you basically just have to turn that monitor out up. Uh, they'll also have, uh, some of them will have like a blend control to go between your direct out and your, or sorry, direct in and a computer normally. So basically if it's all the way to the left, that means that uh, you're getting all the direct input into your interface. So you'll have no latency, uh, and but also no effects within your DAW either. But if you turn it all the way to the right, you'll be you'll be getting everything from the DAW. So if you have a good computer, a good interface, uh, and all that kind of stuff, uh, you should be getting very little latency, uh, uh, probably less than about eight nine milliseconds, and you will be uh, getting a very clear signal in, and you can monitor yourself back through your DAW while adding effects on to that uh, channel as well, and being able to hear it back while you're recording. So uh, now you can hear it back, uh, but what happens if you maybe have uh, performers in your studio or maybe you've got your friends over and you're looking to let them hear it as well? Uh, so most interfaces will have a headphone out as well. So your monitor out or uh, your main out is normally for you to hear it. Uh, so that's normally for your speakers or whatever it is you're going into. Uh, if it's some sort of control room module or something like that. Uh, but the what you want to be doing is uh, giving the performer maybe a headphone mix because maybe you want to hear stuff that you don't want them to hear and vice versa. So on uh, Cubase, uh, how you can do that is there's a few different ways. So you can set up multiple outputs for them. Uh, the problem with setting up multiple outputs is you're actually turning off the output for yourself which is kind of annoying. Uh, you could uh, actually set it up uh, in a way, if we go into the actual channel settings, we could actually set up a, a send uh, bus. So we could send stuff to uh, an actual send track and then send that to them. Uh, but the way I like to do it is through QBS's QSends. It's more or less the same thing, uh, but it requires a little bit of setting up. So if we just go into our VST connections and go over to studio and you want to turn on your control room. So your control room is basically, um, the best way to describe it is it's send everything out into a separate module or controller or something like that. So down here, this monitor one, as I said before, what your monitor out normally is, it's for you to hear. So this monitor is actually what I'm hearing through. Uh, my speakers here and my main headphone mix uh, if then I want to send it out what you do is go to add channel so you have uh, so you so what you have is add external input add talk back that's for if you want to talk back to someone in another room or something like that through their headphones you can add a uh, headphones uh, you can you you can actually do it this way as well. But what I like to do is add Q. Uh, so you can have up to four Qs on Cubase. Uh, now this is Cubase uh, Pro. So you can have up to four uh, Qs. And basically what happens then is you can send whatever channels you want to that Q. So basically, say here's my voice. If I wanted my voice to be going to the performer in the other room, then I would turn on this Q. So you can also choose to have it pre and post fader. Uh, if you have it pre fader, uh, then it's always at that set volume. If you have it post fader, it's uh, whatever the fader is at. It also adds your effects and stuff like that. And uh, so you can send one channel up to four different cues. So that means you can have actually four separate monitor mixes for performers in Cubase. Uh, but let's just stick with the one. So that's actually send my voice now to Q1. Uh, and each one of these is obviously just labeled 1 to 4. Uh, now this same concept works if you had a full band mix. So what you would could end up doing is you make a group channel. And you could maybe send all your drums to that group. And then that group would go out to maybe Q1. And then that Q1 is actually the drums 
So then uh, that's what you blend in for your performer to hear. And the uh, same goes for guitars, vocals, whatever it is. And then if you have uh, little personal mixers in your live rooms and stuff like that, it means that uh, their performers can actually adjust those levels just for themselves. <laughs> So that's a few different ways to get set up for uh, personal monitor mixes and just general monitoring. Uh, now you can hear it, your performer can hear it, and uh, we're basically getting ready to record. So uh, right now you could just hit the record button and go from there, but what we want is to do, we're doing a professional recording here, so what we want to do is give the guys a click track in their ears. So really easily set up on Cubase, all you do is make sure to go into your VSTs outputs or connections, sorry, and on your outputs, uh, it where it'll normally be in output. Uh, you go here if you're just using the output that is, and you hit click. So you can turn this on and off. Uh, if by any chance you're uh, using your control uh, panel. Uh, what you want or sorry control room mixer so you go in here and this is your everything to do with your control room so here's your two cues that's the volume for the cue that's to enable talk back into the cue uh, this is then the activate metronome click so here you can actually so you can turn on the click track for the performer. You can turn the volume of the click track up in their ears. You can actually pan the click track left and right within their ears as well. So uh, that means that uh, if maybe they have a big mix going on, but they just want to hear the click track and uh, far left, you can do that. Uh, so you can do that separately for each individual. I don't even know where that talk back's on, but you can do that for each individual cue. So up to four cues, as we know, and uh, we can also change the click level for ourselves so as you can see i actually have the click level a lot quieter than it would be for the performer because yes i want to hear that click but i don't need to hear it as much as they do especially if they're playing like drums or something like that they need it very loud in their ears so uh you set up the click you just make sure you have uh, activate metronome click turned on because if you don't have that on they won't hear anything and just make sure to set their levels and then here in the Q section you can either give them a mix of everything you're hearing basically or you can give them just cues but make sure that uh, activate metronome click is on and they'll be able to hear the metronome okay so now we're all set up for recording uh the performer can hear everything you can hear everything there's signal coming into our DAW we're just that little bit closer now to actually getting stuff recorded so next week we're going to be looking at some microphone techniques uh, we're going to have Graham in with us as well he's going to be helping us out so yeah guys we'll get chatting to you next week and can't wait to see you again thanks very much for watching so guys if you enjoyed that video please don't forget to uh, subscribe to our youtube channel like this video and go on hit that little bell notification so you stay up to date with all our videos being uploaded we love having you on the channel and we want you to stay up to date with everything thanks very much and we'll see you next week